What is going on everybody and welcome back. MG Marine Tech here. Today we are going to be starting a new series and I'm pretty excited about this because I think it's going to be a cool concept for a lot of you guys. The whole purpose of this series is for you, the users, to gain confidence in yourself, in your abilities to read your electronics, and to gain confidence in the electronics themselves. I say this a lot on this channel in that these electronics are another tool in your toolbox while you're out on the water. The best thing that these electronics can do for you is eliminate that non-productive water and find the productive water. If you don't know what you're looking at on your screen, it doesn't do you a whole lot of good. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be taking one, possibly two uh, images or screenshots, captures of uh, different types of sonar or a mix of different types of sonars and then really breaking them down and picking out different things. You know, maybe show you exactly what trees will look like on side imaging, show you what weeds will look like on down imaging, show you what fish will look like on side imaging, down imaging, uh, 2D sonar, all that kind of stuff. That is exactly what this series is gonna cover. This is going to be the first in hopefully many more videos to come up like this, but I do have one favor to ask and it involves you guys. And that is if you have a screenshot of something that you want to see on the channel and see it broken down and really picked apart, please contact me on my Facebook page, get that picture over to me, and that's something that we can definitely do on the channel. Today, we are gonna be starting with some very basic stuff and then working our way through this. I hope to keep these videos pretty short and sweet. Uh, but really dive in and show you guys exactly what you're looking for and give you guys that confidence in yourself and your electronics to be more productive out on the water. All right guys, so this is the first picture we're gonna be going over and it is a full screen side imaging shot that I captured on a Ultra 126. And if you look down here in the bottom left hand corner, we were running a GT56 at 1070 kilohertz. Now I'm not going to be going into the actual settings that I use in this video because I have a video that was just dedicated for that. Now, being that this is the first side imaging picture that we're gonna be going over, I'm not going to dive into all of the fundamentals of side imaging, but I'm gonna give a very, very brief breakdown of the fundamentals of what you are looking at here. So that is what we're gonna start with, and then we're gonna kinda of dive into different objects around here and different things that I see that kinda of stand out. Let's dive into the fundamentals of uh, these side imaging pictures. And uh, the first thing we're gonna start off with is this very bright beam right here in the center. All side imaging pictures will have these bright beams right here. And this is the path that the transducer took. This is where their picture originates from. Side imaging, you can think of it as two flashlights, one pointing to the left, one pointing to the right. So everything that's on the left side of your boat or on the left side of your picture is the left side of the boat. Everything on the right side of the picture is on the right side of your boat. Everything that is at the top of the screen, this stuff up here is the newest data, and your image will move down as you progress through the water. And everything down here is older. So this, everything down at the bottom of your screen is history. It's stuff that you've already gone over. Uh, moving on, we have all this black area right here. Uh, I will kind of highlight it for you guys the best I can, but this black area that is directly to the left and right of our transducer beam is the water column. So all this black area is water. This is not the actual bottom of the lake. This first line right here where it goes from black to a very hard return, that is the very uh, beginning of the uh, bottom of the body of water that you're in. So this is the first return where that transducer's beam hits the bottom. And then going to the left, that's directly off to the left side. In this picture, you'll see that uh, we are shooting at a 100 foot to the left and a 100 foot to the right, which is dictated, uh, obviously right here, our range is set to 100 feet, so it shoots 100 foot left, 100 foot right. So we are cramming 200 foot of information onto one screen right here. So objects can look extremely small on this picture, but can be rather large in real life. Let's kind of dive into some of the things that we are actually seeing in here. The first thing, starting at the top of our screen, we've got a bunch of sand right here. This area right here is all sand. There looks to be a potential log right in, uh, sorry, don't move that a potential log right here, maybe a couple of rocks right here. 
Um, nothing too interesting right there. Now on the right side in that same area, this is a big rock flat. There's a bunch of rocks, boulders, uh, gravel in this area. Um, and if you uh, just think of it logically, if you were to take a picture of rocks, this is what they would kind of look like. You know, you've got a bunch of mounds and rocks in here, and then you can start to see the shadows from casted from the bigger rocks all the way to where it gets dark here, where you can't really see anything either because it got shallow or, or uh, just the transducer beam, beam couldn't get out that far. Now, where you can really start to see all these rocks is in a couple areas on here. Now, this um, right here is a point. So this is a raised area in the river that goes all the way across, kind of like so. Now, there's a couple of reasons I can tell that it is raised. One, because of this peak right here. You can see that the water column, this point from here to here, that point got narrower, so that is shallower right there. And the same thing, if we do the same thing over here, narrower right there. So this is a ridge that runs through this uh, runs through this river, and you can see all the rocks on here. Some of these might actually be fish that are holding right on top of this rock ridge, um, which would be these little specks, all these little individual specks. Those may be fish. I'm not 100% sure on this one because fish and rocks um, are really hard to differentiate on, on side imaging. If there are fish laying in the rocks, it's almost impossible to see them. But because of these, uh, these white specks are standing out, especially from these shadowed area right here, I would bet to venture that those are fish in there. Even these specks right here, they just look different than everything else. And I would bet that that was a big pot of fish holding on the back side of this little hump that travels all the way through and that's covered in rocks so it'd probably be a good spot to stop and fish. Now going back over to the right side over here we see a large shadowed area which I can circle right in here. Now this large shadowed area is being casted from this pile of rocks right here so if I had to guess this area right here was raised up quite a bit more than its surrounding area because it was casting such a large shadow right around here. Again, more sand all throughout here. There's not really anything at all to see right there. So no sand right, or sorry, nothing to see right there. But if we go on the right side, we can see there is a couple of trees and I'll circle them out for you. So that right there is a tree or a log. This right here is a log laying on the bottom. And uh, I will always tell you this, but what I look for is the shadow when it comes to side imaging. The shadow is what really will tell you that, tell you what's going on and what you're kind of looking at. Um, and that's one of the great things about this GT56 is it seems to produce better, more crisp, defined shadows than the GT54. But again, shadows are what you're looking at, and that's what is really telling us what's going on. If this shadow was not here, the tree itself would be extremely hard to see and again you can see this log laying down on the ground right here uh, clear as day that's a main trunk with a couple of uh, branches sticking out from it now moving down again we have another hump another rock hump that we went to now the cool thing about this hump is that you can see uh, obviously it got it went deeper got shallower went deeper again and this hump you can clearly see it goes just like this. So that that hump right there, and then the same thing, this one kind of went over like this. We don't really know what it did over here because it got so dark. But they're both kind of like that. So this all this area that I kind of have highlighted would have been shallower. So it would have been shallow then starting to taper off. You can start to see how it gets darker. It starts to taper off, taper off, taper off until it finally hits a pretty, a pretty consistent depth right here. So if you're looking for rock parts or points, say you're a walleye fisherman and you see something like this come up and you can, you know, you want to drop a waypoint right here. Say, okay, that's a spot I want to return to and start 
seeing if they're fish. Maybe if you have live scope, drop your live scope in. Hit that part right there and hopefully have a productive day on the water. Now we have one more little <clears throat> object on here that may potentially be a fish. Um, it's never really stood out to me until I really started diving into uh, this screenshot and really taking a good long look at it. And that's this little guy right here. I wish I could zoom in for you guys. I probably can do it in post editing. So maybe I'll do that right here. But um, you can see one little grain of rice right here. And that would be the actual fish mark. And then you can see its shadow. Now, the cool thing about side imaging is you can kind of tell how far something is off the bottom or in the water column depending on how far its mark is from its shadow. So being that this is on the left side of our boat, the mark will come first and then its shadow will be on the left. Just like these trees over here, it comes the tree mark first and then its shadow, tree mark first, then its shadow, but we have the fish mark and then its shadow. So the further the actual mark is from its shadow, the further up in the water column that fish or object will be. So you can see this, say this rock that's right here, its shadow is directly next to it. That, that's because that rock is obviously sitting directly on the ground. Same thing with these rocks up here, all these rocks and boulders and whatnot, their shadows are directly next to them. This one, you can see there is clearly a little gap in between there. And that is kind of the dead giveaway that that's a fish rather than just a rock sitting on the ground is because of its distance from its uh, it, the mark between its shadow. All right, guys, there you have it. That was our first breakdown of a screenshot of hopefully many, many more to come in this series. Now, like I said in the very beginning of this series, the whole point of this series is for you, the user, to become confident in yourself and your abilities to read your electronics and gain confidence in your electronics because that is crucial when you're out on the water is to have confidence in what you are seeing on your screen to find that productive water and eliminate that non-productive water. If you have a screenshot, something that you may need clarification on or want a little bit of an explanation of what you're actually seeing, please feel free, contact me. And if it's a cool screenshot, I think it's a good lesson for everybody. I'll put it on the channel and we kind of do the same exact thing uh, with your screenshot. If you guys like this style content, please give it a thumbs up. Let's me know to keep kind of doing this style content. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It truly does help me out a lot. But as always guys, stay tuned for more tips and tricks on MG Marine Tech.